Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 14 of the course that's professional communication for managers. And when we talk about session 14, it is very interesting that is on business etiquette. So by the end of this session, you will be able to understand that what are the different business manners which you need to follow as a manager. So we are going to talk about the concept of business etiquette as well as I will be briefing you on how to go on for making business introductions and not just this. In this session, I have also planned wherein I will be covering business meals or rather I should say that is dining etiquette and towards the end I am going to talk about that when it comes to interaction with the foreign client so what are the basic business manners business etiquettes which you should follow on. So now let's begin with the concept that what we actually mean by etiquette. So the word etiquette means conventional rules of social behavior. When I say conventional, that is more about the traditional rules of social behavior. And the moment I add the term that's business etiquette, we can also say it as that the conventional or the traditional rules of professional conduct. Every business does have certain basic conduct. So if you are following that conduct, if you are following those norms, that particular rules, so that means you are following business etiquette. If I go with a more brief definition on business etiquette, then yes, it is an expected behavior. What is being expected by others that you should behave when you are on your professional front. So business etiquette is an expected behavior and expectations for individual actions within the society, group, class, profession, corporate and so on. Now when we talk about business etiquette, now within a place of business, it involves that you should treat your colleagues in or with some manners, you should talk to them with some manners when you are appearing at your professional front, your appearance should be again professional. So when we talk about all such things, so as a manager, it becomes very important for you to understand that what are the basic norms, basic manners, basic etiquettes, which you should follow when you are going to step in the corporate world. Because many a times what happens when we talk about these norms, they are not written anywhere. They are a kind of unwritten rules, unwritten social norms, which you need to adapt. And moreover, when they are unwritten, it becomes more difficult for you people to adapt them. But if you are going to be sensitive enough towards your environment, you will be able to understand that what are those basic norms and why you should follow upon and what's the necessity of those basic norms. If you are sensitive enough, then for sure you will be inculcating those business manners, those business etiquettes in you. And trust me, that is going to make you more successful. Not just this, when we talk about business etiquettes, there are people who tend to fail to go in accordance with those social norms, with that social behavior. Such people, they are termed as either loans, loners, some people call it as loners also, or headstrong. So they are termed as loans, loners, or headstrong. 
people who do not follow the basic or the conventional patterns of business manners. Now, when we talk about again the business etiquettes, there are certain fundamental rules and the moment you are able to recall these fundamental rules, you will be able to bring your personality in the most etiquette manner, in the most mannerful way in front of other people. When I say fundamental rules, I will start with the first rule that is integrity. It says that whenever you are conducting your business activities, you should do your business with full integrity, with full honesty. You should never go on for deceiving your customers or your colleagues or your seniors, etc. For example, when you are sharing some profit figures with your investors, make sure that you are sharing the correct profit figures. You are not inflating those figures. So that means if you are conducting your business in the most possible honest manner, in the integrity manner, then for sure it is believed that you are doing your business with full of etiquettes. And not just integrity and honesty is required. Apart from that, the other rule of business etiquette talks about following manners. What are manners? They are typically our habits only, which we tend to repeat on again and again and time and again, it tends to become our manners. So, when you are at your workplace, you need to show some basic manners which talks about that you are mannerful, you are sensitive to the other person's needs. So, for example, if I talk about one good manner that comes to my mind, when you are going at your workplace, be punctual. That is again a good manner. So, like this, you should inculcate and you should bring on bringing good manners in you so that you can be seen as a successful and as a good personality at your workplace. With this, the another rule talks about personality. Personality is an individual's external as well as internal characteristics. But here right now I am going to focus on the internal characteristics. So whatever is your personality, bring that personality in front of the other people. Because the more you are going to bring that personality, your interpersonal communication is going to be more good. Remember. In other session I talked about in the previous one, I talked about interpersonal communication and therein we discussed some tools like transactional analysis, like uh, Johari window and therein I told you that we have certain open areas, certain hidden areas. So if you are going to be or going to have more of the open arena, then your interpersonal communication becomes more strong. So try to minimize the hidden area or minimize the unknown area or minimize the blind spot area. Try to minimize those areas because the moment you are going to minimize those areas of your personality, you are going to elaborate your arena space, open arena space, which is known to you as well as to the other person as depicted in the Johari window. And the moment that part is more, that means your personality is showing to the people. And it is coming as it is, the way you are, the way your internal characteristics are, you are presenting those internal characteristics. And yes, it is one of the most important key to have good interpersonal communication. Now with personality, when I focused upon only the internal aspect, we do have the external aspect in the terms of appearance, right? When we talk about in the terms of appearance, it is more about how you look like. Have you ever thought that you are going to your office and you are uh, just uh, wearing a baggy t-shirt, a lower and uh, bathroom slippers? 
can you go like this at your workplace? No. If you are going for an interview, why you think of dressing up in a very formal way? Why are you not casually dressed up? Why are you not wearing flowery dresses to your interview? Because you know that there are certain manners, certain etiquettes of the physical appearance at your workplace. You need to look professional and when we say professional look, you need to dress up accordingly. Have you ever seen big CEOs when they come to the camera, when they appear in the public, how smartly they are dressed up? So that is what is about the physical appearance that you, how you appear to the outer world. And yes, when we talk about business etiquette, we do have certain decorum of the physical appearance as well. Not just this, in fact, the other rule which I am going to focus upon is consideration. Whenever we interact with the other person, make sure you are considerate enough to think that what that person is thinking. Just empathize with that person. Whenever you are sharing any information, consider the point of view of the other person also. It is not that you are always putting up your points and you are not listening to the other person's point. That means you are not considering them, which is against the etiquette. If you say that yes, you are conducting your business activities with full etiquettes, then make sure you are considerate enough also. You are considering other people's, other person's point of view also who wants to put their point across. You are just not bagging around your point of view, your thoughts, your information. No, not that. The last in this regard, if I talk about the fundamental rules, we have tact. Yes, as a business manager, you should be tactful. You should know that at what time, which information needs to be shared and need not to be shared. If, for example, you are sharing or you are quoting some of the facts, some of the confidential facts of your organization in front of your friend who belongs to your competitor, then that's not the etiquette, that's against the rules, that's against the uh, traditional norms you can say. So you need to be tactful as well. So always remember whenever we talk about some basic rules, we need to have integrity, we need to do our business with full of honesty, not just this, we need to carry certain manners with personality which is being shown to the other, actual personality which is being shown to the other people, not just this. In fact, you need to work upon your appearance. Also, you need to be considerate enough and last but not the least one, you need to be tactful. So this sums up all the different rules of business etiquettes. Moving forward, I am going to talk about that where and how we are going to flow in this session. What are the different areas which we are going to cover under the business etiquettes? See, when we talk about etiquettes, you will be coming across that when you need to introduce yourself, when you are going for a business lunch or a dinner, uh, or you are interacting with the foreign clients, or you are interacting with someone over telephone, how you are interacting in person with the person, how you need to go on for exchanging business cards and so on. So all these things I am going to discuss in this session as well as in the next session. Some of the topics I will be covering in the next session, herein I am going to focus more upon that how you need to make business introductions as well as what should be the business meal etiquettes and also how to interact with the foreign clients. So moving forward, I will be starting with making introductions. Now when I say making introductions, there are going to be two situations. One situation is either you need to introduce yourself to the people around you, to one person or a group, it can be anything. Or you are in a situation wherein you are required to introduce other people. First, I am going to focus upon 
that is how you are going to introduce yourself. Now, when we talk about introduction of self, uh, there are different ways of introducing yourself, but I will talking here about uh, different ways wherein there is a stepwise process how you should process on. Always remember that when you start with your introduction, for example, you went in a meeting right, and therein you met some person and you do not know each other, you do not know him, he does not know you and you want to introduce yourself to that person. So, in that case, how you should start? There is a problem because when it comes to starting, we have no clue that how we need to start. So, in that situation, what you can do is the very first step is offer a firm handshake, a firm handshake. Now, when we talk about handshakes, it also depicts many things. Always start your introduction or always start that interaction by offering a firm handshake. Now, when I say firm handshake, that handshake should not be too light, it should not be too strong. It should be a firm one wherein you have proper grip of the other person's hand and it should last only for 2 to 3 seconds, not more than that. Because mark my words, that is not a friendly handshake because you are meeting that person for the very first time. So, you do not know him. Now, after that, what you need to do? You should tell your first name followed by second name followed by yes your designation followed by your company name if in case both of you belong to different company right remember one thing that some people they start saying myself so and so no that's not a professional way you should either use i am or you should say my name is, that is more professional. Do not use myself, this is, no, this is a strict no when it comes to making business or making formal introductions. You can take your name, your first name, your then your second name followed by your second name, your designation and your company name. If in case both of you, you know that yes, we belong to similar company, it is just we are from different departments. So, you can name your department. In that case, you need to be wise enough. You need to change the things as per the situation, right? Now, uh, never use salutation before your name. Never say like this, I am Mr. or I am Miss so and so. No, do not do this. Now, when you said your name, the other party is going, also going to tell their name. Then the third thing, how to move on into the conversation because you are strangers you have never met before, but still you want to connect, you want to develop network. Then in that case, you can say something about the environment, something about uh, environment or you can say about the situation in which you are that for example, you went for a conference which is linked with sustainable practices. So, you can simply say that uh, I am attending this conference or I look forward to attend this conference because I am really keen to know that what are the different ways in which we can go for sustainable practices in terms of bringing the products to the customers and so on like this you can go on for quoting yourself that why are you here, why you wanted to attend this. Similarly, now the conversation has taken place. Now, it is like that it is going to flow smoothly. Then both of you will be having a conversation, right? Both of you will be interacting and always remember that when you are ending the conversation, you should always be courteous. I am focusing on this because most of the time people forget this, 
you should always say that nice meeting you, pleased to meet you. So all such phrases, looking forward to meet you again, so all such phrases are somewhere is going to create or end that meeting on a positive note. So always remember that whenever you are introducing yourself, that tone needs to be a confident one. That volume needs to convey that yes, you are a confident person. So this is about how to introduce yourself. This was just when you are introducing to a person. It can be that when you are introducing yourself to a large gathering also. Therein, when you are taking up your name, you should not use myself or this is when it is a formal gathering. Now, the second situation, you are going to be in some situations wherein you need to introduce others. In this manner, always remember, introduce a junior to a senior. I will tell you how. Now, if I say junior or senior, uh, some of the person in your organization, uh, she has joined recently as a marketing intern, right? And uh, you want that you, she should be introduced to the CEO of your organization. So, for example, I am the person who is supervising that marketing intern and I want that I should introduce or I should uh, make both the people to interact or to know or to know each other, right. In that case, always remember that you should introduce a junior to a senior. I am always going to say that Mr. CEO meet my new marketing intern miss so and so and that's how you are going to start and then you will be saying that miss shilex she he is the ceo of our organization mr so and like this you should go on always remember that a junior should be introduced to a senior never introduce a senior person to the junior that is wrong way of introduction. But always remember that there is no role of gender. It is not like that a female should be introduced first or a male should be introduced first, no. It is only, only the rank which tends to talk about. Or else other way around you can also think of that less important person is introduced to more important person. Now, if I talk about the organization, right, I have my marketing head with me and I have some of my customer with me. Fine. Whom you think is more important? Marketing head or the customer? For every organization, the customer is the most important person. Right. Now, when I say that uh, less important person should be introduced to the more important person, so might be possible that he is your marketing head, but still he is going to be introduced first to the customer and then the customer will be introduced to him. I will be simply saying that Ms. Shilex meet our marketing head, he is the marketing head, Mr. Jonas who is looking after all the marketing procedures in this organization and he is going to help you out in looking after your query and Mr. Jonas, she is Ms. Shilex, she is our customer and she is having a very good relationship with our company from last 10 years like this, fine. So, in that case, we believe that the customer is the most important person for our business and that is why he or she is being introduced at the later aspect. So, two things when it is about introducing others, first is that remember that to introduce a junior to a senior, there is no role of gender, irrespective of the gender, you should go on and base your introductions on the rank. 
less important person should be introduced to the more important person first. So, when we talk about introduction of others, one more point is there that always remember the visitors, the guest should be introduced to the host. That is another aspect. So, this is what is introduction of self as well as introduction of others. So, I hope this is coming to you that how when you are going to be in the business situations, how are you going to make introductions? How are you going to start conversation with the other people wherein you want to develop networking? Now moving further, I will be talking about dining etiquette. Now when you are into business, many a times you will be going for a meeting uh, over a breakfast or you might be called by your business executives for some lunch or dinner. So see when we talk about business meals, you cannot be casual. You cannot be casual the way you are at your personal front. You need to be professional. You need to follow basic etiquettes. So either of the time you might be ending up acting as a host to the other people or you can be a guest. So first I am going to talk about some of the manners or some of the etiquettes which as a guest you should follow, which you need to focus upon. Make sure when you are a host, so as a host I will be starting first, sorry, I will be starting first with the as a host how you need to go on for following certain business manners. As a host remember that you are the person who is calling other people for those business meals. So make sure you are informing your guest well in advance. It, is, should, it should not be like last minute calling. No, when we talk about business front, people they are busy in their own work. They have different works, different activities to perform, right? So you cannot expect them that at the 11th hour you are going to give a call to them and then you expect them to be there, sorry. It can happen, I am not denying this fact. But the point is when we talk about etiquettes, these are not the etiquettes. You should inform the person well in advance and while informing, in fact, you should cross check his or her availability that whether that person is going to be available or not. Confirm his or her presence after that. Once that he has said that, okay, I will be there, then you need to go on for a follow up confirmation call as well as a host. That should be your responsibility, right? Not just this, in fact, you should tell the venue, time, date very clearly. You should never go on uh, saying like this that on this Thursday we will be meeting at this time. On this Thursday we will be meeting in the noon. No. Specify the time, specify the date that on January 13, 2021, 2022 or whatsoever it is. We are going to meet at 3 p.m. for lunch at this place. Even if you are quoting a particular place, you should name the specific venue that this is the hall number. If that particular place is having different hall numbers, specify it very clearly, very clearly. And in case if there is a change in some of the timings or the date, again make sure that the moment those changes are being incorporated, it should be communicated to the guest, right? And uh, when I talk about as a host, just because you are the host, so be punctual. Most of the time what happens that as a host, the guest is there, but host is missing. That creates a very negative impression on your business partners. So make sure that as a host, you need to be punctual and at the same time you are the person who is arranging the things so you need to look for all the arrangements yourself. For example, you are the president of your organization and uh, yes you are the host as well but 
in that case uh, you can assign some people also who can go and look for the arrangements right that depends on you but the responsibility is on you remember just this point and as a host always remember that uh, when your guests are arriving you should give a warm gesture to them uh, you can welcome with uh, some flowers or whatsoever is the tradition says as per your organization culture also and when we talk about uh, some more rules as a host you can ask for the dietary preferences of your guest but i am going to suggest this point then only when you think that you have ample budget budget is not a constraint for you because if in case you are asking for the dietary preferences of your guest before or well in advance right and they are coming up with very costly things costly cuisines which you cannot afford for that particular business meal because either your company budget does not allow or whatsoever the norms are like that of the company then in that case it is a strict no don't go on for asking the dietary preferences of your people don't then it's okay to refrain yourself from that whatever you want to make arrangements go for those arrangements but be sensitive to their dietary preferences for example if you are calling some chinese uh, business partners and serving those chinese business partners only with indian food is not a good idea in that case you need to be little bit sensitive to their dietary preferences now it is not that that you are a host and you only need to follow certain basic etiquettes it is the guest also who needs to follow business etiquettes and when it is about guest as a guest make sure make sure that you are reaching the venue on time if it is a regular meeting then in that case you can avoid taking gifts for your host but if it is not if it is an occasional meeting at lunch or dinner or whatsoever then you can take a good gesture and you can go on with some kind of gifts whatever again your budget decides as a guest always remember that uh, if if you are reaching there and the host is not asking you about your dietary preferences then don't go on for putting up your or imposing your dietary preferences on the host until and unless it is very something serious or urgent and you cannot eat whatever is being offered due to some health reasons or whatsoever in fact i would suggest you that if there are certain health issues health reasons inform the host before that so that he can make the necessary arrangements for you it should not be done at the 11th hour that when you are sitting on the table and then you are telling that oh i am suffering from this i am having this health issue and now i cannot eat this i want something else no you should inform very politely before going for that business meal to your host itself in fact that is considered as a good gesture and uh, as a guest there are certain things when you sit on the table wait for the clue to be given from the host side so that you can start it should not be like that with the moment you are placed on the chair and you start eating no these are certain clues which you should wait for and you should take from the host right these are some of the basic manners which you as a host or as a guest should follow upon apart from this now i am going to focus more upon the cutlery aspect now people tend to be highly confused when it is a business meal because they are placed with so much of the cutlery right before going for a business meal the advice is that you should know that what is the different arrangement as in the picture you can see that glass 1 is for sherry glass whereas glass 4 is for water right so at least you should know that which glass is for what 
which spoon is for what? Eating with this uh, small spoon talks about, can you eat food with this? No, you need to eat dessert with this. So like this, you should know the basic cutlery function that which cutlery is for what particular food. So that you uh, not end up goofing up with the cutlery when you are sitting with your business partners. And one more thing, if you are not comfortable using different cutlery, as if I talk about the Indians, we are not into this habit of using much of the cutlery part. If you are not comfortable, then use your preferred cutlery only, right? Don't go on for experimenting in front of your business dealers or business partners. If you don't eat with chopsticks, don't start eating with chopsticks just to create a good impression on your Chinese partner. No. In fact, you are going to uh, mess up everything. So you should know about this basic cutlery. And with this, I am also going to talk about some of the different styles of eating. There are two common styles. That's American style, which is also known as zigzag style and European or continental style. First, I'm going to talk about American and zigzag style. See, when it is an American style, uh, you will be finding that you are going to hold your food knife in your right hand and you are going to have your fork in the left hand. And you are going to cut the food with the knife, then you will be placing the knife on the, uh, on the plate and then you are going to transfer your fork from left hand to the right hand and then you will start eating. Why are we calling it as zigzag? Because first you will cut the food with knife which is in your right hand, dominant hand. Then you will be placing the knife on the plate. Then you will be again transferring the fork from your left hand to your right hand and then you will eat. You are not going to simultaneously cut food. No, that is what is an American style is and that's why we call it as zigzag style. The other style is European or continental style. Now in this European or continental style, you will be holding the knife in your right hand, that is dominant hand and you will be holding the fork in your left hand, which is non-dominant hand most of the time for most of the people. Now, in continental style, you will be cutting the food and you will be simultaneously eating with your left hand. Cutting the food, simultaneously eat. You are not going to go on for any crisscross or zigzag kind of motion. Right? So, this is what are the two styles. Apart from this, we do have different styles. But uh, why I am discussing these two styles is the reason behind this that in the most preferred way of eating, these are the two ways which you can go on for and just be sensitive to how people are going for it and just do your homework so that you can know that which style you should be using. Now, uh, we should not say that any of the style is wrong or right. It is just a matter of fact that how people, how that culture is following that. Apart from this, in the business meal etiquette or the dining etiquettes, I am going to focus more upon the table manners. When we say table manners, yes, always remember that you should not keep your hands, keep your elbows on the table while eating. Yes, you can rest your wrist on the table. It's fine. Do not put too much of food in your mouth. One more thing, if someone is asking that please pass the salt, you should not only pass the salt, you should pass both salt as well as pepper. That is a basic etiquette. And we tend to only pass the salt. No, it should not be like that. Whenever you are sitting for some business meal, try not to attend your calls. Put your mobile either on vibration or silent mode until and unless it is very necessary. Then you should take up that call, but not there. You should excuse yourself from all the other people. Then you should go somewhere at, in the corner and then you should speak. So 
when we talk about some table manners one more thing is there that do not criticize any of the food when you are sitting there never do this if you are not liking the taste of that food eat quietly take less food initially so that you can finish it off but don't criticize if you don't eat if you are not a non vegetarian person don't criticize it is just that you don't eat you don't take those dishes fine so these are some of the table manners which you should follow up on you should not comb your hairs when you are waiting for the dinner or lunch or whatsoever again uh you should always give some of the signals to the servers so that they should know that whether you want this thing or you do not want this thing do not make too much of noise while eating and uh, when it is about uh, managing uh, napkin make sure you are not crumbling that napkin and putting it on the plate itself it should be nicely folded and the stain should be inside so all such are basic things which you should be sensitive enough and you should follow when you are going for a business meal so that was more about the business meal etiquette now moving further i am going to highlight that you are going to be in the situation when you will be dealing with foreign clients with the people around the world and when we are dealing with the people around the world there are certain business manners you need to be sensitive to because your culture is very different from the other person's culture in that case if you are not being sensitive enough to understand the other person's uh, way of doing things then it's not good in that case you need to be highly sensitive to them also that how they are doing things so if i talk about the very first thing that is language now language acts as a barrier also but when it when we talk about business etiquette i am not saying that you should learn whole language of your client of your foreign business partner but what you can do is at least you can learn few words how to say thank you in his or her language how to say nice to meet you how to greet that you can always learn in your business partner's language that is again a good gesture which shows that yes you are sensitive to my needs so that you can always do and you should do rather i should say you should always learn few words from the other person's language not just this if you are dealing with a foreign client where in language is a barrier you should always take an interpreter with you and you should always seek permission from the uh, from your business partner so that he should confirm that yes it is fine you can bring any of the interpreter here whosoever you want to and uh, when it is about making agreements make sure that the agreements are in both the languages it should not only be in some language in which you are comfortable it should be made for both the people so that is how you can manage you can follow some of the etiquettes when it is about uh, meeting your foreign client with some other language next in line is business manners yes as per the culture the nation changes your business manner tends to change whatever you think is being taken as good in indian culture might not be taken as good in american culture so you need to be sensitive to that as well here i am going to talk about some of the most prominent styles the very first style i am going to focus upon is american style now always remember one thing when you are going to meet american business partner be punctual be punctual time is money for them they treat time as very important thing even if you are getting late by 5 minutes they see that you are quite insincere they are going to take you that you are insincere might be possible you are not insincere but still just by seeing or looking at the punctuality behavior of yours they might interpret things 
when you are going and meeting an American client, Americans prefer to call people by their first name. Now, if I compare with the Indian culture, here more of the, uh, you can say, hierarchical structures are there. So, we prefer calling people and adding sir or ma'am to their names most of the times. But in American culture, might be possible that your senior is uh, around 30, 40 years elder to you, but still you are calling him by his name and they are comfortable doing that. They are very comfortable. They start their meetings whenever you are going to meet them. They are always going to start with a firm handshake, irrespective of the gender. For example, if you are going and meeting some of your American business partner, you offered a handshake to a male, that is male American partner, but you have not offered a handshake to the female American business partner. It can be considered very wrong. They believe that you are gender biased person. Although you are just doing out of your tradition because your tradition says that, oh, I should not shake hand with female. But again, remember one thing, if you are going and meeting any American, you should always offer a firm handshake irrespective of their gender. If I talk about Americans, if I talk about the business card, how they deal into the business cards. Ameri for Americans, business cards are not that much importance. They don't hold that much importance. Importance in terms of if they feel like towards the end of conversation that yes, I want to be connected with this person and I want to give my business card, business card, then only they are going to exchange their business cards. Otherwise, they will not be exchanging. Right? One more thing, Americans, they are very direct people very direct. If you want to crack a deal, they will say yes on your face. If you, if they does not want to crack a deal with you, they will say no on, on your face. It is not that that they will be saying, okay, we will think, we will get back to you soon, nothing like that. They are very straightforward people. Black and white is for them. There is no gray area for them. Contrary to this, if I talk about Japanese people, Japanese they do not go for more of the straight answers. If for example, they want to deny a particular deal, they will never tell you on your face that oh, they are not liking the idea and they do not want to be into this deal. They will just tell you that, okay, we will try to get back to you soon, we need to sort certain things and that is how they will try to linger on the things and once they reach their place, then they might be sending you an email wherein they have denied. So, they are not that much direct people. Also, if I talk about Japanese, they follow strict hierarchies, they maintain strict status relationship. Contrary to this, Americans, they are quite friendly people. They do not focus more on the hierarchies or the status, they focus more on the people. Whereas Japanese, they focus, they maintain strict hierarchical relationship. A senior is different, a junior is different. Even they try to create distinction. For example, if it is a meeting room, a senior who is going to sit, his chair is going to be different, more big, more comfortable in comparison to the other people who are the juniors. So, this is how they tend to make status more prominent. If I talk about that how they deal with their business cards, for Japanese, their business cards are religion. They are very pious to them. And the moment they are going to start a meeting with you, they will start their meeting by the exchange of business card. They will not start a meeting without the exchange of business card. And even if you are taking the card also, how you are treating that card, that decides that whether the deal is going to be cracked or not. Because if you are not going to uh, take their business card in the most responsible way, if you are not going to handle in the most responsible way, they might feel offended. 
into this. Yes, when it is about Japanese, it is good. They feel happy with small gifts, but make sure that whatever gift you are offering to them, it should be in pairs. It should not be a single one. Also, never send them red color greeting cards because again, when we talk about red cards, it is associated with funeral notices in Japan. So, you need to be sensitive to these particular points. Apart from this, if I talk about a Japanese, how they greet, normally how they greet, they greet with a small bow. They are not going to offer you a handshake, right? Now, moving on to the Arabic style. Now, Arabic people, they are very lavish people, very lavish people. If I talk about, if I compare Americans with Arabic people, Americans will prefer going for breakfast meeting and they are going to be very happy with a wet sandwich or a cold coffee, that's it. But when it is an Arabic, you need to spend a lot. You need to come up with number of cuisines in front of them. They want lavish hospitality. So if you are inviting an Arab client for business lunch or dinner, you really need to spend a lot. With American, it can be fine with few dishes, but uh, with Arab, you really need to spend. Now, when, we, when I say about Arabic, yes, you will be finding their way of greeting is that normally they are also offering a handshake with a small pat on the back, with a small hug also. So that is their way of greeting each other. But when it is about a visitor's wife or visitors, some female from the Arab, never offer a handshake to them. It is again taken as or it is again interpreted in the wrong manner. So make sure that when you are meeting an Arabic person, yes, they might be getting into some of the physical contact with a male counterpart, but don't try this with an Arabic female. Now, apart from this, when we talk about Arabic, yes, uh, you should never show, whenever you are sitting, you should never show the sole of your shoe towards their face. That is not a good idea. And when it is about uh, discussing some of the topics apart from your business, discussing on the oil prices and all should be avoided. You should not go on asking about their family, more about their family into depth. That is not again a good gesture or that is not again interpreted in the right manner from the side of the Arabic counterpart. Apart from this, I am going to focus upon German style. Now, if we talk about people from German, they are very straightforward people. They'll tell you the things on your face that what is correct, what is incorrect, what, is they, what they are liking, what they are disliking, everything they are going to say. Yes, they do follow hierarchy, but at the same time, they do value and respect the other person's point of view also. They do maintain hierarchies, but they know that when and how to be emotional. So they don't express their emotions, but they are very sensitive people. They know how to hide their emotions, but you cannot say that they are insensitive. They are not at all insensitive. They are very sensitive people. It is just that they do not display their emotions to the people around them, right? Uh, yes. Uh, in that manner, because uh, when we talk about Germans, it is seen that they prefer focusing and doing one work at a time. And the moment they are going to finish that work, then only they will be jumping to the other work. So in that sense, we call that culture as monochronic culture. So for example, if you are going and meeting a German client, right, and uh, you are discussing something with that German client on some business deal. And in between, you are taking a call. Simultaneously, you are writing an email also. Simultaneously, some of your person is coming to get certain things signed by you. So that German is not going to be happy with you. 
because he will be thinking that you are not a focused person, you are not focusing on the deal, you are involved in taking up a call, you are involved in having some uh, thing with your junior, signing some papers. So, he, you might be interpreted in this manner that he is taking that you are not serious about the discussion. That is why I said that they are more of the monochloric culture kind of people. Also, when it is about Germans, they do not take risk. So, if if you are getting into deal with them and you are not justifying your points and it seems like as if you are taking a big risk, they might not be going into the deal with you because they themselves are not risk takers, right. Apart from this, we do have Brazil style, they are also quite hierarchical and at the same time constant interruption is acceptable. They are kind of polychronic culture, wherein a person is involved into too many things at a time. But that does not mean that they are not focused, they are focused. Remember where the Brazilian people avoid giving them purple or black color gifts in terms of flowers or whatsoever because they are associated with funeral aspects, mourning aspects. So avoid going for such things. So see dear learners, these were some of the different business manners across the nation. Now my suggestion to you people is that whenever you are going for a business meeting, for a business interaction with some of your international client, please read something more about his or her culture. That what are the business manners they used to follow in their culture so that you should not be interpreted wrong. So dear learners, in this session, I have discussed about what we mean by business etiquette, why are business etiquettes important to be learned by you as managers. And also, I discussed about how to make introductions, how to follow the manners when you are going for dining with your business partner and how to interact with your foreign clients. So, I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you and happy learning. Thank you.